Welcome, Will You Are at Home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we wish you all a blessed Advent. We are in the third week of Advent. We certainly would love to hear from you. So today we're taking your questions and your comments. You're watching It's Monday. We are here. We are alive at 1-800-221-9460. If you are calling and you are outside North America, you can always reach us at 205-271-2980. You can always send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. And check us out on Facebook. Well, today the question for the show is this. The third Sunday of Advent, that Advent, which was yesterday, is Gaudate Sunday. It's Rejoice Sunday, yeah. right? So people are wearing pink. We are in our pink. Mm -hmm. We are popping pink because we <coughs> choose by an act of our will to be rejoicing. Some of the priests prefer rose. rose. They say rose. And we're not pink, we're rose. And <laughs> our priests and our deacons look absolutely lovely mm. on Saturday night. So the question is this. What is the joy of of the Lord and how may you experience it in your life? So what is the joy of the Lord and how may we experience yep. it in our lives? And today is also the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Uh, yes. So that's incredibly powerful. And it's also the 42nd anniversary of the founding of EWTN 1980. That's actually the founding day. And then August 15th, the Feast of the Assumption is the first airing of the show. So sometimes those things get confusing. So so we often count EW10 from the airing. So that would be 41 years, but it's 42 years if you talk about the actual founding and not the airing. Right. And so and we want you to call us today. We want to hear from you regarding this whole theme, this truth of Gaudete, of rejoicing, of joy. What is what is Christian joy? What is the joy of the Lord? Do you experience that? Do you know people that do? We want to hear from you about that, where you think it, its origins, where it comes from, how we can you know, encourage that in our own lives. But maybe you want to call about Our Lady of Guadalupe mm -hmm. <laughs> or the combination of Mother Beginning, uh, the, this network on the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. That was not a mistake. And what does that say? Why that feast day? Why did she choose that day? What is that about? We can discuss that as well. Well, and Father Joseph, if you listened to the Mass this morning or you watched the Mass, Father Joseph preached an outstanding sermon, just in letting us know the history of what all that was about and how she came and, and what was our, Our Lady, the, Guadalupe. Our Lady of Guadalupe and, and the Blessed Mother's appearance and, and what happened after she appeared, um, how beautiful that was. And boy, oh boy, do we need a miracle in our time, in our lives, right now. Yeah, something like 10 million Aztec people came to the Lord, nine to 10 million in 10 years. Yes. Oh God, do we need an awakening, revival. God, bring millions to yourself. And as I was thinking, grandest grace, and it stopped the human sacrifice. Mm -hmm. The yes. sacrificing of babies, the sacrificing of, of adults to, to false gods, the evil that was there at that time. We're not all that different no. in America and in the West uh, with, with abortion and uh, euthanasia, assisted suicide, and so on. Oh, God, would you grant grace like you did at the time of Our Lady Guadalupe and Juan Diego? We need your grace. We need w what only you can do in the United States of America and upon the nations of the earth. So the question is this, what is the joy of the Lord? And how may we experience it in our lives? Give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. So give us a call now. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Hopefully we'll hear from you. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, remember that today we're taking your comments and your questions on our show. So if you're watching the live broadcast, it's Monday. We certainly would love to hear from you. Please give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. Outside North America, you can reach us at 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com and check us out on Facebook. Well, we're rolling. It's the third Sunday of Advent. It is Gaudate Sunday or Rejoice Sunday. What is the joy of the Lord? And how may we experience it in our lives? First of all, I guess we can have all week of Gaudete, mm -hmm. of joy. It's, yes. not, it's a Sunday, but we should always be manifesting joy. And we want to hear from you. Have you pondered joy? What is the joy of the Lord? Not just a, a, a natural human joy, which is wonderful, an emotion, that we feel joy. We feel happiness from time to time. Things happen through circumstances and situations, and we feel joyful. And nothing wrong with that. That's wonderful. But we're speaking about a God-given joy. We're speaking about joy that's in God, not in us, mm -hmm. it, unless he gives that to us. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Hope I got all those in there. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so do you experience joy? What, what is the joy of of the Lord and Our Lady experienced that so perfectly, right? And, and it fits that kind of definition of what joy is in the Lord and the Lord in you. <laughs> that's, that's Our Lady, right? That, that she conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and she visits Elizabeth, who's also filled with the joy of the Lord. And Our Lady says, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord and my, my spirit it's rejoicing in God, my Savior, for he was mighty. He's done great things for me. Holy is his name. But the joy we're speaking about is God in you. God was really in her, in Jesus Christ. And she's in God. She says, let it be done to me according to your word. She can't bring the joy. Joy's coming to her, but we can stop the joy of the Lord. You sure can. And she says, let it happen to me. No, you can, we can grieve the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And one of the first evidence is that we have grieved the power of the Holy Spirit is an absence of joy is there's there's no peace there's no grace mm. there's no joy so it's kind of like when one has to examine their interior life and say hey what's going on I mean I personally just in the past couple of weeks or couple of days I knew hmm I needed to go to adoration I needed the mm. Eucharist, and so it was Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Mm. I got to have Mass on Thursday, went to Adoration on Friday, and went back to the Eucharist mm. on Saturday. And I'm just going to tell you, interiorly, it's a game changer. Yeah. And those are all the powers of the sacraments that our Lord gives to us. And it's not like... Because as a wife and as a mother and as a grandmother, especially during this time of year, as a boss at work, and you get busy. And there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of things to keep you busy mm -hmm. and to take your time and your energy. And maybe you're not sleeping well. And maybe you're not eating well. And maybe you're not praying like you should be praying. And, and it changes the center of you. And then all of a sudden you go to church and it's like, oh my gosh, it's the third weekend in Advent and <laughs> I have this to do and I have this to do. And the Holy Spirit's coming to us and saying, slow down, keep your eyes on me yeah. and I want to refresh your soul. Mm -hmm. Because we go from the third week of Advent to the fourth week in Advent and there we are. So it's really, I love uh, the liturgy of the church and how it teaches us to make an adjustment. Now, if you're looking for the world to give you this adjustment, you will not find it. You will be disappointed. It can't give you that. It's not in material things. It's not in where you live. It's not in what you do. It's a matter of who you are in Christ alone. And do you know him? Does he know you? And no matter what you're going through, you might be having miseries and sufferings and trials and tribulations. Can you have joy in the midst of those things? Yes, you can. Yeah. If you keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. And so it's a matter, it's intentional. 
that's my word. Everything is intentional. Nothing happens by, oh, I just got a bucket of joy poured on top of me. It don't work like that. Mm -hmm. It has to come from within where you choose to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus mm -hmm. so that you know how this is going to end no matter what the storm is happening in your life, no matter the tsunami that is coming your way. Mm -hmm. um, and I had some cases and clients this week that really disturbed my soul yeah. at our Pregnancy Resource Center where we work. And they really disturbed my soul. And I, I carried them with me all weekend and I, I talked to my one girlfriend. I said, why, why isn't the one client calling me back and getting back to me? And my friend Barb said to me, because joy they don't know how much we care and love for them. And I was just like, yeah. And that's like Jesus, right? Jesus says, why don't they come to me every day? Why don't they see me? Why aren't they? Because we just don't know how much yeah. Jesus loves us. Joe, we have us. a phone call here. Joseph in New York. Uh, Joseph, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your, your thoughts, your comments, especially about joy, or what would you like to share with us? Well, thank you very much for taking my call. Uh, basically, you know, Happy is uh, just something passing, it's just not an event. But joy, to me, is sharing the love that God has put in us from our birth and being able to share that no matter to, to whatever storms you, we go through and showing that love to, to another uh, in many different ways, it, to me, is the joy, or the joy in the journey. Mm, yeah. Thank you, And, Joseph. Joseph, we receive that and we give that, right? Absolutely. But we have mm -hmm. to be open to it. Mm -hmm. We have to be open to God's grace because God's grace gives us the grace to be able to increase our love for each other mm -hmm. because we're all brothers and sisters in the Lord. Yes, yes. thank you. And th this is the thing. I think the emphasis with joy is on grace. We can pray for it, welcome it, nurture that joy, but grace is what God does. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand this. There's just things that we can't do. We can't manufacture this grace. We can't buy this grace. Mm -hmm. um, we don't even earn this grace. You know, grace is grace. Mm -hmm. We're saved by the grace of God and our, our faith you know, in, in the Lord. And uh, we need to be praying for more grace. And, the grace of joy and love and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness. That God would stir that up. That God would grant that to us. Um, so we need to be desirous of it. But it's a supernatural work that, that God is doing you know, in, in our lives, can do in our lives. And like we said at the outset of the show with Our Lady of Guadalupe, that was a work of grace, mm. that she appeared and touched Juan Diego and did this miracle you know, within his, his garment and went to see the bishop. And nine million people were converted. And, and human sacrifice, the abomination of killing children and sacrificing children ceased. Mm. But you know, you go on in time in Mexico, you know, great people of faith, and then you get the persecution of the church in what the late 1800s or wh whatever the date was, early 19, 1800s, whatever it was, whatever the time was. And so we need to be revived, mm -hmm. and, and joy can be revived in your life. Like, I, I, that Psalm of David, uh, where he committed so grievous a sin, he said, you know, create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. And so there were times we had to play, Lord, would you revive me? Mm. Would you send that grace again? I have all these gifts. I'm part of that lineage. And yet I've killed a man because I wanted his wife. And so that's David, I think, right? And yet in the end, it said David was a man after God's own heart, but he had to be revived and renewed ongoing conversion. And so we need to pray, Lord, this Advent season, this Gaudete, let's make it a week, Revive me again. Send the joy of your salvation to me. Send it to my church family, to our parish. Send it to the United States of America and to the world. Do what you did at that time with Our Lady of Guadalupe, Lord. Please sweep our countries with the grace of God. And we need to be praying for our priests and our bishops and all of our deacons. Yeah. We have a comment. It says, we can experience the joy of the Lord whenever we make a good confession and our sins are forgiven and wiped away. The Lord is so merciful, even to the hardest sinner, and he's always ready to forgive us whenever we sincerely repent. Jesus, I trust in you. And this is from Joshua. And that's just what you were saying. David cried out to the Lord. What did David do? He repented because sin separates us from God, right? 
And so there will be no joy. There will be no grace. There will be no hope mm -hmm. because we're being separated. And then we have to run back. And the Catholic Church is set up that we run to confession and say, Lord, I, I'm sorry. I have grieved your heart. I have been disobedient. I have followed my own way. And, you know, the acronym for joy is Jesus, others, and then yourself. <laughs> well, the world is just the opposite. Everything is me, 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 self, self, self. And guess what? Nobody's happy. I mean, you just go out in the highways and byways of this world. And, you know, I, I went to a, a mall, which I n normally never do. People were, it was oppressive how people were looking and being. And, yeah. and you were just like, what? But that's what the world does. And it just keeps producing yeah. more and more of that. So if you have light, if you have the presence of God, you are not to hide it under a bushel. You are to let your light shine. And now, if you're a smoldering wick like the song, like is that yeah. in, um, Isaiah, yeah. where it says, I will not quench a smoldering wick. If you are a smoldering wick and you're like, oh my, I'm about to go out. You have to stop, assess where you are. What are you doing? Why are you smoldering? Why are you not ablaze? Why are you not on fire? Why are you not filled with the Holy Spirit? And take the corrective steps to get God's passion back. Say that song, breathe on me, breath of God. Would you breathe on me, the smoldering way? Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew. That I would love what thou dost love. That I would do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me again. Say that now. Right where you are, wherever you might be, in the midst of your pains, your suffering, your circumstances, your own willfulness and sinfulness, say, Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew rise. May this Advent and this Christmas be a time where you come back to the church, where you, you go to confession. I've, I've heard of a woman, some, they told me 80 years she, mm. like she was, she's in her 90s, that she didn't go to confession, like 80 years. Mm -hmm. That's like, a long she time. She received one time, her first communion, mm -hmm. and never went again. And then she came back. You could be 70, 80 years with not going to confession and not receiving the Lord. And, and God, God, God is not only waiting for you, he's running after you before your time here on earth is up. Here's comment? another comment. It says, the Lord is our refuge and our salvation. We can experience his joy whenever we come to him in prayer. And this is from Maria on Facebook. And that is true. We need to make sure we're coming to the Lord daily in prayer, daily in reading. I mean, God has given us his word, his, the word of God that you then, when we, we do our morning readings, I'm asking the Holy Spirit to write his word upon my mind and my heart, and then that there would be fruit and there would be evidence that I would speak words of life within the course of that day. You, like Mother Teresa said, I want to be a pencil in his hand. You just, let, whatever God wants to do, not you hold, be in the pencil telling you God what you're going to write. Yeah. The world is doing that. We are set apart. We are not of this world. We are a different people. We are sojourners. We don't belong here. I, I, when I wake up, I'm like, I don't belong here. Mm -hmm. I belong somewhere else. I do. You do. And heaven is our home, but right now we have a mission. We have a job. We have something we have to give for whatever reason. God has called you and me to be alive in a time such as yeah. this. And the world is hungry for your words of life. Well, uh, you know, I'm hearing again and again that part of joy, and we, we've been dealing with John the Baptist saying, I must decrease, he must increase. I must decrease, he must increase. And part of the decreasing of ourselves is giving Christ away. Yes. Gossiping Jesus, chattering Jesus, praying for opportunities to share Jesus. And, and somehow we receive. We're, we're filled with joy. He increases in us when we're saying, I'm not even asking you so much. I'm, I just want to give you away. I want to know that I want to tell people what Jesus Christ has, has done in my life. And I want to pray with people. And all of a sudden you get filled mm -hmm. with the joy of the Lord because our Lord is a giving God, a loving God who wants to reach every soul for himself and for his kingdom. Thank you so much for sharing with us. May the best be yet to come for you this Advent season. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, before we wrap up today's show, we're going to go to Rome to check in with beautiful Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, what are your thoughts on today's topic? Well, hi, Jim, and hi, Joy. You know, I have to tell you, your focus for today, how are we living out Gaudete or Rejoice Sunday um, in our lives? It really is a thought-provoking question because so much that's in our lives, uh, violence, wars, pandemic, economic difficulties, man's inhumanity demand, none of that brings us joy or happiness or delight. But above all, I think we have to remember that Advent is a season of spiritual joy. It's that anticipation of the birth of the child, Jesus, that little baby who actually is the redeemer of the world. And that has to bring great joy to our hearts, as does the human joy that we feel in this season. Our families coming together, attending beautiful liturgies, uh, beautiful carols being sung, throughout towns and homes. So much to be joyful for um, in this season. Now, the Catechism says this, joy is deep in the heart, the spirit, the center of the self. The way to pleasure is power and prudence. The way to happiness is moral goodness. The way to joy is sanctity, loving God with your whole heart and your neighbor as yourself. Now, I'm pretty much a joy-filled person. I, I'm an optimist. I'm, I try to be upbeat and positive and, and to feel good about helping other people and, and being there for them. And, and I think that all happens when you do have God in your life and when you love your neighbor. And I have to say for me personally, as I was putting together thoughts um, for this little segment, uh, I think that the joy that we feel anticipating the birth of Christ is a joy that repeats itself and has for 2,000 years. It's the joy of receiving him, God, every day in communion, in the Eucharist. He's always there for us. So um, let's move from joy to little joyful papal news. Now, of course, yesterday, Gaudete Sunday, as is tradition in the Vatican, the popes bless the statues of the baby Jesus of all different sizes that are brought to St. Peter's Square by families, of course, especially children. They're blessed and then they're put in homes and, um, and often in schools. And this was, by the way, a tradition started over 50 years ago by Pope St. Paul VI. Now today, of course, is December 12th. It's the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe and Pope Francis will celebrate Mass at six o'clock tonight in the Basilica. And this was a tradition started by Pope Benedict XVI, December 12, 2011. So with that bit of news, uh, I close here and back to you. Joan, thank you so much for those wonderful insights about Gay Dete uh, Sunday and this whole week of joy. Tune in tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central for Witness to Providence. It's the annual Mother Angelica Award tonight. Don't miss it. Find out who will receive this year's reward. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for, for opening yourself up to the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. St. Paul, pray for us that we would rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, and you pen those words, I believe, from prison in Philippians. And uh, may we know that there's a joy that this world can't give and it can't take it away. It's the joy that's in the Lord. It's the joy that comes to us as a byproduct of being in the Lord and the Lord in us. What a great joy. May you be filled with it this Advent season as you go into Christmas. Be filled with joy and anticipation that the face of Almighty God is going to be revealed in the nativity of Jesus. God with skin, God made poor, God with a face is coming to us. And he's coming again for a bride to take that bride to himself. You're an important part of this family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and with Joy. Bye now.